There was no telling where he would be sent, much less for how long. On the whole, his were quick in and out jobs. What they weren't was predictable. In an attempt to give their relationship some structure, something for the two of them to look forward to, he had printed out a calendar. The idea was to ink specific dates they felt certain they could be together. The additional hope was that, in between his assignments, he could swing through Oslo to see her. With her promotion, she was wedded to headquarters. Any hope of tagging up with him on an assignment in a hotel room in some far-flung exotic locale was out of the question. Their best chance of seeing each other was in Norway. It would be tough, but not impossible. He was committed to making it work, and when he set his mind to something, he made it happen. With the clock ticking down, he wanted their remaining time together to be special. They had been eating a ton of takeout lately, so tonight he decided he'd cook a real American dinner. Something for just the two of them. It would be a night he could freeze in his memory and replay until he returned and they were together again. He finished the last sip of his Coke kaffe, a popular Norwegian afternoon coffee served black and slightly cooled. Standing up, he put on his sunglasses and strolled across the cobbles of Christiania Square toward his favorite butcher shop. Though it was a bit of a walk to the food hall in Mothallen, it was worth it. Honest Pulsmockery had the best meats in town. Out at the cottage, there was an old smoker that he had made his mission to get up and running again. Once he had, he decided to throw a Texas-style barbecue. When he asked friends where he could get the absolute best brisket, ribs, and pork butt, everyone had said honest. The staff had been so friendly that he had gone back again and again, even just to pick up ground beef for burgers. They were an amusing bunch and tried to upsell him into horse meat or beef tongue, seeing good-naturedly if they could gross out their American customer. They had no idea that over the course of his career, he had eaten much, much worse. After buying a couple of T-bones at Anis, he would hit Vulkanfrucht Agrunt AS for fresh vegetables. He figured it was a safe bet they'd have potatoes and salad fixings. Hopefully, they'd have fresh ears of corn as well. Once those items were taken care of, all he would need was a nice bottle of wine and dessert. Not far from the food hall was Vin Monopola. He'd probably have to pay through the nose for a good California red, but if they had one, he planned on ignoring the price tag. He wanted their dinner to be as American as possible. All that was left was to figure out dessert. Apple pie felt a bit too on the nose. What's more, while he could grill or smoke up a storm, he was no baker. Since Sylvie was a big fan of dark chocolate, he decided that's where he would focus. There was a stall in the food hall called Sebastian Bruno that sold chocolates. But what she really liked were Belgian chocolates. He made a mental note to keep his eyes peeled for any along the way. After dinner, if there was time, they could stream a movie. Her passion for classic Hollywood films was bottomless. So far, they had watched Casablanca, Lawrence of Arabia, Psycho, The Godfather, On the Waterfront, North by Northwest, and Citizen Kane together. Tonight, he wanted to introduce her to The Night of the Hunter from 1955. It was unsettling, but a classic nonetheless. A few blocks from the food hall, he spotted a small boutique that looked promising for quality chocolate. But when he was 50 yards away, a taxi pulled up and disgorged a ghost. The sight of the man stopped Harvath dead in his tracks. His eyes had to have been playing tricks on him. The man he was looking at was dead. Harvath had killed him himself. Chapter 2 not only had he killed him, but he had hung around just long enough to make absolutely certain the man was dead. How the hell was he now seeing him alive? And what was the man doing in Norway? There was only one way to find out. Giving up on his errands, he fell in a safe distance behind and followed. The man walked at a moderate, confident pace. Had Harvath not been trained, he might not have noticed the moments at which the man checked to see if he had a 